Today I want to talk about the Express Web Framework for Node.js. Now this is a very quick, simple way to do all the most common things that you would do if you were building a server-side website or a API. You want to build an API to feed data to your website, to your mobile app. This is the way to do it. So we're going to look at how we can put together uh, just the basic Express app in just a couple of minutes. All right, so let's take a look at how we can do this. So expressjs.com, this is the website. I'll leave that link down in the description for you. And all the code that I'm going to write now, I'm going to leave that down uh, as a link to a code gist down in the description for you as well. So let's jump into VS Code. And I've got a blank empty folder here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to set this up as an NPM project so that I can install Express and have it as part of this. So we'll say npm init, and we'll start off with dash y, yes, for all the defaults. There we go. Our package.json is there and set up ready to go. So npm i, or npm install, i is the shortcut for that. And we're going to say express, and we want to save this in our package.json file. So that will download and install that. And if we look inside of our package.json, we will see that sure enough, in the dependency section, Express has been installed. Okay, that's all we care about for right now. Now we're going to create a file. We'll call it app.js. We can call it anything we want. This is just the name of our main server file for our application. Now I'm gonna close this folder. We don't need to look at that anymore. We've got everything that we need there. Now in my file, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start off with use strict. It's always a good idea to uh, make sure that you're enforcing good coding behaviors. So we're going to have that at the top of our file. Then const express equals require and express. This is the module that we're bringing in. It's uh, installed inside of node modules. So we just have to put express and node by default will search inside the node modules folder for us to find that. Then we're going to create our app object. And that is just call this express function. There it is. Now we have an, app, an object called app. That is going to be our web server. At the bottom of our file, we're going to say app.listen. And we want to listen on port 3000. And we're going to have a function callback here. We can specify the host name if we want. This is optional. Um, we are going to put the callback in here and it will give us an error object if something goes wrong. So inside this function, we're going to say if there is an error, well, then we know something went wrong and we're going to log out to our developer console for ourselves. There was a problem. And we can write out what the problem was. And then we're going to return to exit out of this. If not, we're going to console.log the fact that our server is running. So we are listening on port. And I just arbitrarily chose port 3000 here. You can set this to whatever number you want. Uh, traditionally, port 80 is what you would use for HTTP. But for now, we're just going to use this for our test. Okay, so we have the express object, we've got it listening. And if we were to run this right now, so we said node app.js, there we go, it is running, it is listening on port 3000 for any requests that come in. Well, we don't do anything with the request. So we're not going to bother with anything right now. We'll just stop that control C to shut that down. We need to create some routes. And these are the different endpoints, the different URLs that people can enter in their browser or in their testing tools or from their mobile apps. These are the requests that are coming to our server for specific file names. So I'm going to set up a route for this. This will give me the route to the root of my server. And then this is the function that's going to run when this happens. So 
app.get, and then we get a request and response object will be passed in here. Express will call our function when a request for this URL comes in for this endpoint. It will give us the request object, everything that is in that request object, including things like rec.url. So this is the URL that was requested, which will be this. Then we can send back a response to whoever made the request, and that's the purpose of our response object. So we can say send And there we go. I'll just send back an h1 tag. We'll send a chunk of HTML. Now, the send method will, by default, look to see what we're sending back. And it's going to say, oh, hey, you're sending some JSON, or you're sending some HTML, or you're sending plain text. And based on the contents of what you're sending, it will send the appropriate header for us. So it will determine the content type and set that header for us. All right, so now if we run our server again, it's listening on port 3000. If we jump back to our browser, and in here I do type HTTP colon slash slash localhost 3000, enter. There we go. Here is our file. This came back from our server. Here is the request. And if we look inside here, we got a 200 status code that came back. I didn't have to set that. That was set automatically by Express. And in my response headers, you can see that there was a content type set. Text slash HTML, char set, UTF-8, by default, for me automatically by Express. And it also set up this e-tag, which is, it's like a hash. It's an identifier for the version of the file. So there we have it. We have a route set up for looking for slash. There it is, we requested it again. If I jump back into Express, we can see where I said request URL, it's been requested twice. That's what I did in the browser. All right, now one other thing I'm gonna show you here, how to handle redirects. So if I had app.get and we're looking for something, let's say that this is an old URL, something that doesn't exist on our server anymore, but for backward compatibility, we're going to leave this in here. We're going to keep this as part of our routing. What I'm going to do though, is I'm going to send a redirect. I'm going to say it's a 301 status code. And the 301 status code means it's a permanent redirect. So the browser knows from this point on, or any proxy servers know from this point on that this resource is no longer at that location. Where are we going to send them? Well, we're going to send them to some other URL. We're going to call it new. Now, if we do that, we should handle it. So let's create a get for that route. It's going to do the same thing. Rec res. There's our function. And inside of here, we're going to send back another chunk of HTML. Let's say this is an H2 with the word new inside of it. There we go. Just like that. So if we request this URL, it's going to tell the browser and then it's going to redirect automatically and bring this back. So let's start up our server, jump back in here. And if I request, yep, localhost, the root, that still works. If I add old onto there, hit enter. There we go. Here was the request for old. And we can see it got a 301 move permanently. And then the browser requested new, and that's what came back, and that's what's been displayed. All right, so we've got different routes that we can create, and we can also deal with different HTTP verbs. So these are uh, different types of requests. This one that we're doing here is a get, but I could also be dealing with a post for the same URL, or for the same endpoint, a patch, put, delete, any, basically any one of the HTTP verbs, express will support all of these. And then inside of here, we are dealing with the same endpoint and then request resource and our function. 
So all of this is going to be the same. It's just going to be what we do with that request for this endpoint with the different verbs. What do you want to do when you have requests with the different method for the same endpoint? I'm going to have another video shortly that talks about all the HTTP verbs and what they mean and what they can be used for, what they should be used for, and how they differ from one another. That'll be coming up in the near future. But in the meantime, this is how you can set up a basic web server using Express. If you have any questions, feel free to leave those in the comments uh, and watch for more videos coming soon about Express. Once again, thanks for watching.